ever wondered what gives fireworks the beautiful colors and vibrant displays? Well, it all starts with one remarkable element, and that is sulfur. So sulfur has so many different uses, but one of its uses is in the manufacture of fireworks. Now, would you be interested in learning how sulfur is extracted? I'm betting you are. So let's dive in. Sulfur is extracted through a process called flash process. If you're wondering what's with the name, then the guy who invented this process was known as Herman Frasch, an American chemist, and therefore the name. So this process is used for extraction of sulfur for a variety of reasons. I'll mention two reasons. Now, reason number one is that sulfur deposits tend to be deep underground. So you have deposits that are more than 200 meters below the ground. And these deposits are usually covered by a layer of clay or soil. So it makes traditional mining methods quite challenging to use. Another reason is because this method has been adapted in such a way as to take advantage of the properties of sulfur, specifically the melting point of sulfur and the insolubility of sulfur in water. We'll discuss this as we move on. Let's dive in. Now, this process is based on the fresh pump. What is the fresh pump? The fresh pump consists of three concentric pipes. Concentric pipes simply refers to pipes where you have one pipe surrounded by another one and so on. Now, in the case of sulfur, we have three concentric pipes. So you have the innermost pipe surrounded by another one and finally a much larger pipe surrounding the two. Now, as you can imagine, these three pipes share a common center. So the outermost pipe is the widest with a diameter of 15 centimeter. The innermost pipe, sorry, the middle pipe has a diameter of 8 centimeters. And the middlemost pipe, the innermost pipe is the narrowest with a diameter of 2 centimeters. So 15, 8, 2 centimeters. Now, these three concentric pipes are sunk deep into the sulfur deposits. So as we move on with the explanation, I'll be tackling the purpose of each pipe at a time. So let's start with the outermost pipe. Now the outermost pipe passes superheated water into the sulfur deposits. Let's pause there. We are having solid sulfur in these deposits. Now if we want to extract the solid sulfur, we need to, to perform two steps, let's say. Step number one is that the sulfur needs to be molten in liquid state. Step number two, it needs to be pushed upwards above the ground for collection. So how is step number one attained? How do we melt sulfur? Now you know that if you have a solid substance and you want to melt it, then you have to introduce heat that is above the melting point of that substance. The good thing is sulfur has a low melting point of uh, around 113 to 119 degrees Celsius. So temperatures above this need to be introduced to the deposits to ensure that the sulfur melts. Now this is in the form of the superheated water. So this is water, liquid water, that is at a temperature of 170 degrees Celsius. Now just take that into consideration. Liquid water at temperatures of 170 degrees Celsius. Normally, this will be impossible. And the reason why this will be impossible is because water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. So that means that at 100 degrees Celsius, water evaporates. You find it in vapor form. So how is the water in this case, in liquid state, at temperatures of 170 degrees Celsius? Simple. Because the water is being subjected to very high pressures of around 10 atmosphere. So the high pressures ensure that the water remains in liquid state even under the high temperatures. So we have superheated water at 170 degrees Celsius and at a pressure of 10 atmos. Now when the water comes into contact with the sulfur deposits, what do you think will happen? The sulfur deposits will melt. So we've accomplished step number one. We have molten sulfur at this point. Now the next step will be extraction of the sulfur, pushing the molten sulfur above the ground. Now this is achieved by the hot compressed air that passes in the innermost pipe. So the innermost pipe acts as a passage for hot compressed air. So number one, the air has been heated. Number two, the air has been compressed. 
Now, when you hear the term compressed air, simply means that the air has been subjected to very high pressures, specifically of 15 atmosphere. Now, when the air comes into contact with the mixture containing number one, molten sulfur, and number two, water, it creates a frost, a bubble, you know, a foam like substance. Now, the pressures, the high pressures that are present within the air, force the mixture above the ground by passing it through the middle pipe. So the mixture then passes out and is collected in tanks. Now sulfur on cooling solidifies and separates from water. And that is that. So just a recap, we have three concentric pipes of varying diameters. The largest and outermost one has a diameter of 15 centimeters. The innermost one has a diameter of 2 cm and the middle one has a diameter of 8 cm. What is the purpose of the outermost pipe? To pass superheated water that is at 170 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 10 atoms. What is the purpose of the superheated water? To melt the sulfide deposits. Why does the superheated water need to have a high pressure? The high pressure ensures that the water does not, okay, the water remains in a liquid state even with the high temperatures. The purpose of the innermost pipe is to pass hot compressed air. The air is at a pressure of 15 atoms. The purpose of the hot compressed air is to create a froth with the mixture, hence ensuring that the mixture containing the molten sulfur and water passes upwards through the middle pipe and that is that that is the fresh process so we are done with our lesson today if you haven't subscribed up to this point be sure to do so and like and comment please see you next time